Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Today, we're going to do a first look at Deepin. Let's run through, uh, we're going to boot it up it, at least as a live. We might attempt to install it. We might not. We might just poke around at the live key. We'll kind of know when I uh, get in there. Uh, but before we do that, we're going to go ahead and have a look at the website. So Deepin, of course, this is one of those ones that is a little bit controversial. Um, it is a Chinese-based operating system based on Ubuntu or a Debian or a Debian Unstable or Debian or Ubuntu or Debian because they keep changing the base. All right. I don't even know what it's based on anymore. I, I'm going with Debian, <laughs> but I don't know. I could be wrong. Um, there was some controversy uh, as Quitsub reported in one of his videos, uh, who is a security analyst, that Deepin did have a script in the Deepin store, which is on the Deepin OS that we will be looking at, but not the Deepin desktop. If you were to install the Deepin desktop onto something like Manjaro or or Arch or something else that could have the Deepin desktop, he showed that there was a script in their store that was very much like a Google Analytics type script, but it was harvesting IP addresses and and usage data from the store, sending that back to a Chinese company. And of course, since it's China, China equals bad. It's just like here in the United States, Orange Man bad. You know, China bad, Russia bad, um, and so whatever. And with all of that being said, uh, the last, you know, they only had that little tracking script in there for one edition. It was pulled out probably due to the controversy. For me, the biggest issue is the EULA, which is very strange, very odd, very nebulous. And uh, that's something I'm pretty sure is still going to be in here. Uh, other features that they've added, they've added Cloud Sync, or is it could sync. I don't know. Could the, how much could, could the woodchuck could if the Cloud Sync could cloud cloud syncs? I don't know. Um, we will forgive them. English is not their primary language. Uh, but it is called cloud sync, not could sync. And um, what they have done is they've added that in to sync. Um, now, and it's unclear to me whether it's syncing files or just system settings based upon your ID. Uh, but that's something there. And then there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different things. They will now auto recognize your region. Um, that's something you just have to do manually. Uh, they did add a disk burning utility uh, so that you could uh, pop, just pop in a DVD and burn a disk directly off it. So there's some things that, that Deepin is doing that make it a very good and very attractive operating system. In fact, when I did my video looking at Deepin versus Manjaro with the Deepin desktop, I did prefer the Deepin a little bit better. Now, that was after the tracking script and before the EULA. Um, I'm not sure I would run the Deepin OS at this point in time, just because the EULA is, like I said, crazy and strange and nebulous, and I have a whole video about that, so we're not going to, um, we're not going to dig into the depths of that. They do have several improvements, though. Uh, you can now see the capacity remaining of the battery. Um, so here's a Chinese screenshot and a... Um, US English screenshot, and then several different fixes in here. So like I said, the Deepin desktop environment itself is definitely an attractive option. And so for this, it's definitely worth having a look at. Again, I'd probably rather run an Arch or a Manjaro or something else that supports Deepin out of the box rather than run the Deepin OS itself. Uh, but with all that being said, we're going to go ahead and boot this guy up into a uh, up into a uh, live system here. You know what? We do not have the option to just boot it into a live key. Like I said, I have downloaded these and I have not even looked at them yet, just so that we get the first experience together. So what I could not get to this screen fast enough, but what the screen gave me the option of is install. So, okay, I guess we're going to have to start by installing Deepin. So you guys on the edited version will miss out on some of that. You guys watching this live, well, We'll be going back to the chat and chatting a little bit more and things like that. So let's go ahead and walk through the installation, though. So here is this, and here I have agreed to the Deepin EULA. Now, the part in here that made it the worst is uh, basically, you know, number one is any issues, any problems, anything that they're doing, you have to settle in a Chinese court. So uh, good luck, you that are not Chinese. There also is something in here about the software not being able to be used outside of China, which is fascinating and interesting in and of itself. Again, I covered the I covered the EULA um, in another video in more detail, so we are not going to do that. Okay, so now, friendly reminder, the system has detected you're using a virtual machine, which will affect the system performance. Yeah, I know, I know. 
All right, let's call this deepen, 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 and my super secret password that is definitely not deepen. All right, select our time zone. It selects New York, which is good, and now we have an option. Um, we're going to install it here. Let's see. So I can't tell from here if this is going to wipe this guy. Um, so there's an advanced, there's a full disk. Not sure, we're just gonna try this and see what happens. Preparing for the installation. So of course we're doing that. Now I don't know what, I don't know what it's going to do. I don't know if it's going to attempt to install, if it's wiping the disk or if it's just trying to install Deepin on top of what else is already on this disk. So we're in for a mystery. I'm not sure what's gonna happen. Um, but let's go ahead and, uh, see what this is going to do. All right, so we are successfully installed. That took uh, about five minutes or so. So I, I still don't know exactly what installed. Did it install alongside or did it wipe the thing out? All right, so we are going to... So there are, like, while they do cover a lot of your details, there's some of your details that they just don't quite get right. <laughs> like, give me the option to shut the thing down. Don't just give me in a reboot loop where the only option is to reset. And there's other things I could have done. I could have logged in under the root and shut the system down in the terminal. It's just faster to do it that way. All right, so let's see what happens when we boot into this guy. So the question, do we have just deep in? It looked like we just have deep in. It looks like it, it did wipe the disk. All right, let me enter my super secret password that is definitely not deep in. And, oh, okay, so this is a, a new thing. So there is the effect mode, which gives us cute little effects, and normal mode. So normal mode would be better because I'm in a virtual machine, but we're going to run the effects mode anyway because reasons. I do like the cursor we get. All right, so we are booting into full screen. And, of course, the version that we get when we boot into full screen is basically the Mac clone. So you can see here it behaves very much like the Mac. Uh, if you are using this for the first time, you can actually use the items in the corner to make menus. And you can also, we got sound coming through the thing. You can also turn on a list mode over here. And the other option is you can right click the bar and switch it to an efficient mode. Um, actually, it was already on efficient mode. Um, I'm not sure. There it is. There it is. So doing this and this basically will turn on a Windows type mode. It is, dude. Okay, I know I'm in a virtual machine, but the thing should not be running this bad. Okay, there it goes. All right, so this is kind of like the Windows mode. And of course, expand this guy out, right click, change this back to fashion mode, turn it back into a Mac type mode. So that's what is good about it. Um, there are, there's just so many of the little things that do make it look attractive. Of course, the settings panel is on the side, which is nice. It is novel. Um, one of the challenges is after using this for a while, you start to find that it's actually, it's a little bit more annoying. Now, one of the new features we want to look at is this cloud sync. All right, so Cloud Sync presently is only supported in mainline China, and you would have to log into your system. Now, this is what I don't know if exactly what Cloud Sync does. So is Cloud Sync sending all of your data up to the cloud, or is it just sending your computer settings and configurations? Honestly, their documentation is very lacking and I can't tell. So if you were to sign up with this, then you could in theory sync your things up. Now again, it still works. Right now it works only with mainland China and it is something they are going to put in everywhere else. I would absolutely 100% unequivocally never recommend anybody using this. Of course, all of these servers are in China and the Chinese government does have access to anything and everything on those servers and they cannot be encrypted to the government. So that is definitely one of the primary features. Now, the thing that makes Deepin very good is the App Store is one of the best app stores. Um, just the UI, it's a very attractive system. Now, 
right now uh, it is actually detecting that we are not in China. So there is an option inside of your settings, I believe. At least it used to be up in your settings, which would allow you to change your location. And apparently we can't do that anymore unless I don't remember where it is. Okay, this is that deep in cloud sync. So if you're signed into cloud sync, then uh, I guess it keeps a copy of all your, your applications as well. So you used to come in here and be able to choose what your region is. Now it will automatically detect your region. So it detects I'm not in China. So it's giving me a non-China repository. So basically they have, the best I can tell, removed functionality from this, basically bringing this more in alignment with like your Windows and with your Mac type systems where we're losing control. It says, ah, I know where you are. And so I'm going to set myself up for you automatically. It is good for the noob computer guys who don't want to figure out how to change the, the settings to a nine Chinese repository, but it is bad for anybody that actually wants to take control of your system. And this is the direction that Deepin has been moving. You know, sign into CloudSync, get everything up on the cloud. Uh, we know where you are. We're going to deliver apps to you based on your location. Region locking is what they're basically doing. This is kind of a problematic thing. So this is why I say that while I like the Deepin desktop environment experience, it's a very interesting and novel view. It At the same time, it does some things in a very disturbing manner to me. So as far as where everything is, of course, the software choices, they give us Google Chrome as our only web browser. Um, and so we would have to go, fortunately, since this is Linux, we can install a new one through the App Store. So if this were Windows, I would have to use Google Chrome to go download a better web browser. But since this is Linux, I just have to do that through the App Store instead. Of course, probably Windows 10, you can probably do that now. We have WPS as our main office suite. Now, some people say, you know, as I'm doing LibreOffice things, people are often like, use WPS, it's better. Um, I don't think it is. WPS is, is proprietary software and involved in their EULA is a part that you are not allowed to reverse engineer it. Yes, it does duplicate the Windows uh, or the Microsoft Office software suite better. But if you've ever taken the time to read this, which I've done in other places, oh, and of course, join the experience improvement plan means you're going to be sending a lot of data to them. Sure, let's go ahead and accept it for the purpose of this video. And um, what we can see is, yeah, we do have a layout that is very similar. Now, the thing is, is that LibreOffice in version 6.2 and later also has this view layout as something that you can select. So while, yes, it does seem to look a little bit more like the Windows platform, this is something that LibreOffice does as well. And we don't have to deal with that giant EULA. So all of the software choices in this, we have WPS, uh, which is wants to be spyware, wants to have EULAs. We have Google Chrome, which wants to be <laughs> spyware, wants to be EULAs. Let's boot up Google Chrome. And this thing is like a EULA factory. I mean, it's just... Eula, 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 Eula. Of course, we didn't get, we didn't have the option here to, that didn't tell us about the Eula for using Google Chrome, but we actually do have one. Uh, let's see, the file manager, the App Store is something that is specific to the Deepin, um, the Deepin OS. The App Store itself does not come with the Deepin desktop environment. So if you were to install this uh, on Arch or Manjaro, something else, you would not get the App Store. Then they have their built-in applications, which some of them are, are pretty good. Some of them are not. Um, I found their screen recorder to be a little bit limiting. I think it like doesn't do audio or something. I can't remember. Most of the other things that we have, we do have Graphic Driver Manager. One of the updates to this is that they have fixed several of the NVIDIA graphics drivers. So that's an option there as well. And everything else is, is pretty much what we would expect to find. You know, it's a Linux distribution that has just enough software to be useful for your typical person. It has the basic tools and utilities. We have, you know, scanners and, and printer applications. We have screen recorders, a voice recorder, a screen recorder, a screenshot tool. All the basic tools that we would need without feeling like system bloat either. Um, and so that's kind of good. We do have a package manager. Which one's this one here? Drag and drop files here. Oh, I guess that's an archive manager. All right. 
package manager. I would figure a package manager like Synaptic or something, but that's not really what it was. Um, anyone else think that same thing? Uh, here's our terminal. Um, what the RAM usage is. Do we have HTOP? Oh, really? Kitty. Go ahead and install HTOP. I want to see what the RAM usage looks like. All right. Looks like our memory usage is 539 megabytes. So that's actually very good. All right. And I was also told that in settings, they do now have the option to turn off um, turn off uh, notifications, uh, sounds, notification sounds. So sound, sound effects. And OK, so here we go. So we can toggle off notification sounds. OK, so that's actually solves one of the problems that I had. There's other settings in here as well. So you can actually turn on or turn off very certain things, which is which is good. I like that. That's uh, definitely, definitely good that they have that change. And I think somebody asked about Samba shares. Let's have a look. Um, computers in LAN. So this is my NAS. And yeah, it does look like uh, we can get into here. So let's go ahead under anonymous. All right. Yep. So yeah, shares, network shares seem to be functioning now. And I do remember that being a problem, in fact, come to think of it. So that one seems to be fixed. The notification seems to be fixed. Uh, memory is not taking a lot. So yeah, there's actually a lot of things, other improvements that they have done within this system as well. So uh, with that, let's uh, see if there's uh, anything else. All right, so that's deep in a nutshell. So new features, Cloud Sync is your primary feature, um, and the other items that we that we went through, uh, a lot of bug fixes, a lot of things like that. Uh, not a lot else has changed inside of Deepin. Definitely, it's not a distribution that I would recommend. So why don't you guys let me know what you guys think. Have you used Deepin? Do you like Deepin? And uh, do you like the Deepin desktop environment and not the distribution? What's your general thoughts on that? I'd be, uh, be curious to know of all of your thoughts. Let me know in the comments down below.